So the last sentence of the previous chapter ended with, now Winston grabbed the cell phone off Dilmer's belt. It detached with an efficient snap. Then Winston turned and ran for his life. <clears throat> Dilmer reacted with frightening speed. Winston had thought he would be too entranced by the contents of the safe, but Dilmer was aware immediately of what had happened. Winston didn't stop to consider his next move. He charged out of the room and into the blackness of the hallway. Behind him, there was a scraping metal sound and he heard Dilmer stumble with an oof. He had probably gotten tangled trying to climb out of the metal bookcase he had toppled. Good. Winston kept his eyes focused keenly on the light at the top of the stairs. He half jogged, half ran down the dark hallway, groping wildly in front of him, and then tripped noisily over something, another metal pipe by the sound of it. Winston went sprawling. The floor was cement and there were bursts of pain like a string of firecrackers and parts of him hit the floor, knees, elbows, ribs, shoulders. His head bonked against the floor and he saw a galaxy of twinkling stars. Idiot, idiot, he thought to himself. He hurt in a dozen places, but he also knew that Dilmer was about to come roaring up the stairs in the hallway behind him with that flashlight of his. Winston would be caught. He would never make it to the stairs in time. Winston was aware that his shoulder was brushing up against something splintery. One of the thick wooden pallets leaning against the wall, acting entirely on impulse, Winston felt that the pallet was there and a sizable gap between the pallet and the wall. Winston wasted no time. He crawled into the gap behind the pallet and pulled himself in. Get back here, Dilmer yelled angrily. He had burst into the hallway. Winston was facing the wrong way and couldn't see what Dilmer was doing. He couldn't turn around in this narrow space. If he bumped the heavy pallet too much, it would reward him by sliding down and crushing him. Where are you? Dilmer said a bit more calmly. There's no way you got upstairs in time. You can't see anything. No, you're still down here. Winston tried to shrink as he heard Dilmer walk right by him. Now, out the other side of his hiding spot, Winston could see Dilmer's flashlight beam sweeping the hallway. <clears throat> Dilmer walked slowly to the stairs, peered up as if he was not entirely convinced that Winston hadn't fled, but he shook his head. No, you're still down here. Where are you? He turned around and began playing the flashlight beam back and forth. Winston peeked into the first of the rooms, or Dilmer peeked into the first of the rooms. How long before he thought to look behind this pallet? Time to use a cell phone. Winston couldn't even see it in his own hands. He felt for the hinge, opened it, and pressed randomly at the buttons. He must have hit the right thing because the keypad suddenly glowed neon green. The phone beeped loudly as it came to life. Winston winced in agony. I heard that, shouted Dilmer. He came out of the room he was in. Winston, you come out of here right now, and I promise not to hurt you. Do you hear me? Winston heard it, but he didn't believe him. He huddled over the phone, anxious that Dilmer not see the light. He found the antenna, lengthened it, and looked at the phone's tiny screen. No signal available. It informed him in a cheerful blue letters. Winston was too far underground for the cell phone to be of any use. He wanted to cry in frustration and anger. Now what was he supposed to do? He had to get upstairs, but Dilmer was blocking the way. He was stuck. You're here in the hallway, Dilmer said, heading slowly back towards him. Where are you hiding, Winston? He couldn't stay here forever. Dilmer would figure it out soon enough. He had to do something. Winston had the smallest glimmer of an idea. He put the cell phone in his pants pocket and began to feel around carefully, carefully the underside of the pallet. There was a wooden brace across the center of it and another up at the top. Winston shifted into a kneeling position and held on to these braces. He tensed up, waiting for the right moment, praying that he would be able to move this heavy thing when he needed to. Dilmer said wearily, come on, Winston. I'll find you eventually, and then we'll be right back where we started. All you're doing is wasting time. 
he was getting closer to Winston's hiding spot. You think your mother and sister appreciate this? They just want this whole thing over, believe me. With a strangled yell, Winston leaned with his shoulders and pushed the heavy pallet as hard as he could. It lifted forward reluctantly, overbalanced, and fell the other way. Dilmer was perfectly positioned on the other side, jumped backwards, tripped, and fell. The pallet fell on one of his outstretched legs and Dilmer screamed bloody murder. Winston didn't think he could stick around to administer first aid. He ran for the stairs. Again, he stumbled in the dark on some random piece of garbage. He didn't quite fall though, and he regained his balance right at the base of the stairs. Winston looked back briefly to see that Dilmer had freed himself from the overturned pallet and was coming straight at him. Winston scrambled up the stairs, squinted in the fluorescent light, and turned the corner to the second staircase. He dug the cell phone out of his pants pocket and took to the stairs. Dilmer was right behind him. The gate at the top of the stairs was shut, and Winston, panicked, could not remember how to open the thing. It was there to prevent toddlers from falling down the stairs. The latch had to be lifted up and out at the same time, and as he did this, Dilmer caught up. Winston grabbed him by the shoulders. He caught up to Winston and grabbed him by the shoulders. The gate swung open and the two of them tumbled to the floor just inside the main entrance. Help, help, Winston called as loud as he could, trying to untangle himself from Dilmer. But Dilmer was stronger by far and he climbed on top of Winston, pinning him to the floor. He put both hands over Winston's mouth. Shut up, shut up, he hissed. Dilmer looked angry, of course, but also confused and a little wounded as if a good friend had betrayed him. What is wrong with you, huh? This is a very simple thing I'm trying to do here. You are making my life very difficult. Do you understand me? Winston nodded. He risked a quick glance at the cell phone. It was still on. He moved his thumb to the keypad. Nine, one, one. Send. Winston was hugely relieved that the thing did not beep again in acknowledgement. A word appeared in the cell phone's tiny screen, calling. Now I'm going to get off of you, said Dilmer, and I'm going to hang on to you like my hands are covered in glue. The safe is open. There's nothing in there. There's something in there. We are going to grab it, and then we are getting out of here. So help me if you try one more thing. Dilmer started to get up, which meant taking his hands off Winston's mouth. Winston lifted the phone to his face. He didn't know if he had connected with anybody, but there was nothing to do about that now and yelled, the library, come to the Gillenville library. Dilmer was for one second flatly astonished at this further disobedience. It was clear he had forgotten that Winston had a cell phone. Then Dilmer recovered. He grabbed the cell phone and, in an unthinking desperation, stood up and threw it against the wall. Several pieces came flying off. Winston didn't wait to receive the same treatment. With Dilmer off him, Winston scrambled only halfway to his feet before he started running again. Winston headed for the main reading room at full speed. Nothing to trip over here. He went straight to the bookshelves, ran in between two of them at random, and came out on the other side, took a step to the right, stepped into a particularly dark shadow and crouched down. He never would have dreamed that he had this much fight in him. The only, <clears throat> was there another exit from the library? He didn't know. The only door he had ever used was the main entrance, but there had to be an emergency exit somewhere, right? He tried to think, but his mind was spinning like an out of control merry-go-round. No, if there was another exit somewhere, he didn't know where it was, and he didn't think this was the right time to start poking around the library to try to find out. Dilmer would get him for sure that way. Where was Dilmer anyway? Why wasn't he right behind him? Maybe he was limping because of the wooden pallet. That thing was heavy. Winston tried to silence his breathing, which sounded as loud as a freight train. He was going to give himself away. That was probably exactly what Dilmer was doing, creeping silent around, listening for him. There was nothing but silence in the library. 
If Dilmer was creeping around, he was doing an amazing job of it. Could Winston get by him without and get out the main entrance? He couldn't see anything from back here, just tall, shadowy bookshelves. But he did not want to move. Dilmer hadn't found him. This was an excellent hiding spot. To give it up seemed crazy. It seemed too dangerous. Minutes crept by. He sat there listening to the silence, waiting for the next thing to happen, wondering how he would react when it did. The next thing that happened sounded like, ugh, Winston cringed. He didn't know what that meant or where it had come from, but the sound didn't seem to be close by, and that was just fine. The next thing that happened was all the lights in the library came on. Winston nearly screamed. His hiding spot was destroyed. Now he was just a boy sitting on the floor. He scrambled backwards trying to find darkness, but there was none. Dilmer would find him in seconds. He didn't know where to go. He had to run, but the next place he ran to might be smack into Dilmer's arms. Winston crouched down low and peered around the closest bookshelf. He saw a figure standing in the doorway of the main reading room looking around, but it wasn't Dilmer. It was Ray Marietta. Zach Dilmer, it seemed, had gotten greedy. Well, Winston already knew he was greedy. So this was just another example of it. Dilmer had been forced to assume that Winston's call to 911 was, was successful and that the cops must be on their way. Rather than chase Winston around the library, he ran back downstairs to get the ring, hoping to seize it and get away before the police arrived. So we pick up with it in the next video. Okay, Luke? Thanks.